You know, when I find a great deal on a laptop, I just have to give in. Today, we're taking a look at this unassuming ThinkPad X230 I bought for only £15, with some problems that may or may not be a deal breaker. Let's explore this 12 year old Ultrabook and see if you can give it a new release on life. By the way, if you do enjoy the video and want to see more, then a like and sub will be greatly appreciated. With all of that said, let's delve into the past and see how this laptop set the scene for the next few years. The ThinkPad X230 was released in 2012, a time of netbooks and thick underperforming laptops. Thankfully, there was something along the horizon which offered decent performance in a small enough footprint. A quick look on the Wayback Machine reveals them to start around £1,000 to the upper thousands, so not affordable by any means. However, they were never known for value. Simply put, these were durable machines and offered a sleek design without compromising on functionality. The one I found here cost £15 on eBay. The seller described it as not turning on. This could easily be a loose connection or faulty RAM. Anyways, let's get this to base so we can thoroughly test it and possibly make it into a mini Linux machine. A few days later, the package arrived in what felt like a shoebox. And yep, I was correct. But whatever, as long as the ThinkPad is all in one piece, that's all I care about. Included in the box was the ThinkPad, AC adapter and a spare VGA cable for some reason. First impressions are pretty good, there were a few scuffs and scratches but given the age of this thing I wasn't too bothered. It was quite grimy in places which will remedy with a quick clean, ports look to be good also and the back also in acceptable condition. Opening up the ThinkPad the hinges feel light and screen looks to be intact. This is the first time they went with a new style keyboard which many people detested at the time and I must say it does look quite strange with the old style chassis. There's a small crack on the corner of the display bezel but other than that it looks to be in good nick. Let's confirm to see if it actually boots up or not. After a few seconds there was clearly no signs of life but as I went to properly insert the charger it suddenly booted up. Seems to be a simple charger port issue. Looks like we were hit with a best case scenario as the charger port can easily be replaced or it's loose from its housing preventing a connection. But anyways let's take this thing apart and see what's causing the issue. As I mentioned before, what could be happening is a loose connection to the DC port, and as expected, it is quite loose in there, so let's disassemble the ThinkPad and investigate this issue. I start off by taking out the battery, SSD, which to be honest I was not expecting, and RAM. It appeared that we had 8GB of DDR3 RAM, which was pretty sweet. I mean, I wasn't expecting any, so it's a huge plus it came with some. So far, so good. With all the external components out of the way, let's start by unscrewing the back to access the front. This disassembly is not intuitive at all and requires you to remove the keyboard to access its internals. So with all of those out of the way, let's turn around and pay attention to the keyboard. Honestly, I didn't even want to touch this, but here goes. With a pick tool, we just go around the edges to release the keyboard and be mindful of that ribbon cable. The keyboard is missing its middle scroll button, but as long as the keyboard is functional, then it should be sufficient for my needs. Next on the agenda is the touchpad, which conveniently comes out with the palm rest. Here's a first glance of what the inside of the X230 looks like. Let's take out the screws that hold down the keyboard bracket, disconnect all the ribbon cable and connectors and start unscrewing. Out comes the speaker. The display screws are located at the back which needs to be undone and boom, the display is out of display. Okay. We can finally access the motherboard and with a little tug it gives way. Honestly, for what it is, they crammed a hell of a lot of stuff on this. Now it's time to look at the connector. First glance, it looked completely normal, but I did notice the bracket was loose rattling around in the laptop, so let's screw that down. Let's create a test bench, shall we? With the display and DC port connected to the motherboard as well as the keyboard, will it turn on? Nope. No signs of life at all. Even messing around with the port yielded no result. I guess the next thing to do is replace the DC port. Operation DC port is on the way. I found this one on eBay for £5 which hopefully should do the trick. A few days later it arrived so let's see if that makes any difference. Since I welded the old connector down to the chassis it was quite the struggle to remove. Nonetheless I got it out, put the new one in and screwed it all down together. Let's see if this will solve our issue. Let's go! Okay, so it looks like it was just a bad connector. Okay, so F1. It's fine guys, I've got a keyboard, don't worry. Let's get into the BIOS and see what this X230 is all about. All right, so let me find the USB. Come on, I'm doing this one-handed. This is not easy, there you go. All right, so F1. Guys, I'll take that as a win, honestly. I mean, I was not expecting this to work, but let's see what the X230 is all about. So, we're currently packing a Intel Core i5-3320M CPU with, what well, I'm guessing, probably two cores and four threads, hopefully. 
maybe two cores and two threads, who knows. So we have, we currently have four gigabytes of RAM, but I do know that it came with eight gigabytes because we obviously put a single stick in it just to test it. And the BIOS date is 24th of May, 2012. So what's that like? 12 years? Oh my God, okay. So yeah, there's no CMOS battery, so it doesn't recognize a date. But let's see if there's any BIOS password. I mean, yeah, there's no BIOS password, that's pretty good. It didn't ask us for a BIOS password anyway, so there's no point in even checking that. But let's see if there's computer trace, because that is quite important. And disable, not activated, okay. Computer trace, disable, not activated, okay, that's really good. So what we can say here is the ThinkPad X230 does in fact work. I mean, all it needed was a new connector and that's pretty much it. Obviously, we'll run all the necessary tests that's required for the ThinkPad X230 to see how well it can perform under load. So with all of that said, let's reassemble this little bad boy and see how good this thing really is. What a miracle. Now all that's left to do is reassemble the ThinkPad and give it a good clean. Check this out. With the ThinkPad done and dusted, let's boot her up shall we? As I tried to get into the BIOS, there was something quite evident. The F1 key did not work. How typical. Anyways, with an external keyboard plugged in, we got into the BIOS and got a glance at the specs we are working with. There was what seemed to be pen marks on the display, which I unfortunately wasn't able to remove. As I let the ThinkPad properly boot up, it went into Windows, which was a surprise, and lo and behold, went into someone's personal account. Yeah, I don't really want to mess around with that. It's quite negligent on the seller's part to not have fully formatted this drive before sending it out to me as it appeared to be partially full. Thankfully, I have no nefarious intentions, so we'll perform a quick format and hope the drive is in good health. Now, as this ThinkPad is getting in on age, approaching 13 years, what's better than to just load a lightweight distro of Linux? For this time around, we're installing Pop OS to hopefully spring some life into this ThinkPad. Windows is always an option, but as Windows 10 is nearing the end of its life cycle and Windows 11 is a no-go, this seems to be the best option. We can create a dual boot to easily cycle through operating systems, but for now, we'll just stick with Pop OS as not only running well on old legacy machines, it offers a bunch of cool features we'll check out later on. So let's commence the install, get into Pop OS and do some necessary testing to see whether this ThinkPad is up to the task in 2024. Alright, so we finally have Pop OS installed on this mini beast. Let's see how functional this thing really is. So the first thing I want to test is the multimedia keys, the trackpad and also the keyboard. Let's see if they're all functioning. So the first thing here is the trackpad and yeah, it looks like it's responding well. The right and left clicks do work. And obviously these buttons here as well work as well. The only issue with this ThinkPad is the middle scroll button, which to be honest, I don't really use. So 
For now, I'll just leave it as that, but maybe down the line, I'll probably upgrade it. Another thing I want to test is the track point. And yes, looks like it's responsive, which is nice to see. And last but not least are the multimedia keys. So here is the mute button. And yes, that does work. And the volume rocker does work as well, which is nice. And also, I'm guessing this is the microphone. Internal microphone, yes, okay. So that's pretty sick. And of course you have the keyboard, which works as intended. But the only problem with this keyboard is the F1 key does not work for some reason. Now, I have no clue why the F1 key doesn't work, so the only way to get into the BIOS is using an external keyboard, which is quite annoying, so I might have to replace that at some point. But for the time being, we'll just keep it as is because, I mean, this ThinkPad only costs £15, remember that. So I want to keep it as cheap as possible. For the time being, we'll just keep it as it is and probably replace it down the line. To be honest, it does feel quite snappy. I feel like if I installed Windows 10 or Windows 11 on this, it'd probably feel a lot more sluggish. You, of course, have all of your pre-installed apps that are included in Pop! OS. So we have settings and all of that stuff. The weather. Let's see what the weather's like, shall we? Okay, so 53 degrees. I mean... I am from the UK, so I have no clue what that is. What is that, like 11, 12 degrees? I mean, the majority of the world uses Celsius, opposed to Fahrenheit, so why not? So yeah, 11 degrees. And what is the daily weather looking like? Oh, that's pretty cool. So next week, a high of one and a low of zero with some snow. We, of course, have Firefox, which was pre-installed on the X-30. Let's see what it's saying. All right, so let me just press not now. Let me go on monkey type. I want to test my... Amazing typing skills, all right. It's okay. I mean, all the keys were working and they did register on time, so I guess you can give it that. But the only problem with this keyboard is, of course, that F1 key. And it is quite annoying to get into the BIOS because you do need to use an external keyboard. But other than that, it's functional and I don't really have any problems with it. They are quite tinny to be honest, but I mean, what do you expect from a 12 year old ThinkPad? I mean, I can definitely use them. The one thing I did notice is the screen looks like a TN, unfortunately. I know these did come with IPS displays, which I hoped we could have got, but honestly, I'm quite happy that it even works to be honest. So, so let's just find some 4K video and see how those colors really look. From an angle, you do notice the blacks kind of like fading out and turning a bit gray, but straight on, it doesn't look that bad. So. Let me just find a good video and see what it's like. 4K? Do you think it'll support 4K? Let's see. Yeah, I don't think it can do 4K. Alright, uh, let me go to 1080p. If it can't do 1080p, then that's an issue. So, can it at least do 1080p? Yes, it can. Okay. Honestly, it doesn't look that bad. I feel like if you look straight dead on, then you don't really notice the TN-ness, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean. But yeah, the colors look okay. If it was an IPS display, it would have been a lot better. But honestly, for a £15 ThinkPad, which was supposedly faulty, I am quite pleased. Let's see how it's like browsing the web. So let me just type in X230. Okay. Quite snappy. Nice to see. And let me just find a web page that can hopefully load up. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do this one. A web page from CNET, okay. So, yeah, it doesn't take that long to load. Pictures are loading, which is nice to see. And honestly, yeah. Like, you could probably use this as a normal web browser machine. Or like doing like Word docs or whatever. Like, I mean, overall, this is quite usable. I mean, if you told me that this ThinkPad was, what, from 2012, nearly 13 years ago, I would have not batted an eye. I mean, you really don't really notice it. I mean, I guess you can tell by the... Aesthetics pretty much flawless. I mean, we'll obviously test some games at the end of it to see how those graphics hold up in 2024. You could probably use this for another year or so. Why not? And especially in Linux, because obviously Linux is less taxing on those specs. I mean, we are currently running a two core four thread CPU in this. So not the best of CPUs. So obviously Linux was the best choice in this regard. The thing I didn't test out is the backlight, which I mean, you can't really call it a backlight, can you? It's more of a what do you call that? Yeah, anyways, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's quite usable. Let me turn off all the lights in the room so you can kind of get a feel of how bright this mini light on the top really is. Here we have the Think Light on, and I guess you could say the keys are legible. I mean, I can read them from here, but 
I really, I mean, so the think light is currently on and I guess you could say the keys are sort of legible. I mean, I can read them from here, so I guess it is working, but I feel like that's more thanks to the screen than the actual light. But yeah, I mean, it is a solution, I guess, but it's definitely a solution, but I'd rather use a backlit keyboard. One thing I forgot to mention is the battery. Does the battery actually hold a charge? Well, let's find out. Let me just unplug the AC adapter and look at that. Okay, so it's actually holding a charge, which is actually a miracle. Now, there's no clear-cut way of actually checking the battery health on Linux, but there is a small command that you can do in the terminal that you can actually find the battery health. And since Vantage isn't actually supported on Linux, then this is basically the best way of finding your battery health. Okay, press enter. And there you go. Okay, so what do we have here? So, capacity only 12%. Oh my god. <laughs> Only 12%? Are you joking? I mean, I'm not surprised whatsoever, but 12%? I mean, this battery basically is redundant. I mean, I don't think I can really use this, can I? So, energy 7.45 watt hours, energy full design 62. So, this came with 62 watt hours from the beginning, and now it has 7. That's great to see. And is there anything else? Can I scroll up? What does it say here? I can't really see the cycles, which is annoying, but yeah, other than that, I mean, the battery is basically on its last legs. I don't really want to be using this without the power. Here we have Minecraft 1.21 running on the ThinkPad X230. Let's see how it performs. So since we can't get MSI Afterburner on Linux, I'm going to have to use the inbuilt FPS counter, which is quite annoying. But yeah, currently we're getting around 78, 80 FPS, which... I'll be honest, is a lot higher than I expected. I mean, I was expecting in like the low 20s, high 30s at best. And yeah, we are running on six chunks with fast graphics. Let me just show you the settings, uh, video settings. So we're on six chunks, six chunks, quality, fast, clouds fast, weather default, leaves default, part, part, particles minimal, can't even speak. Smooth lighting, okay, let's just turn it off. We don't really need that. Okay, and uh, Entity Shadows, let's turn that off as well. But yeah, there you are. So currently getting around 75 FPS, 78, 61, which honestly I'd say is playable. But yeah, I mean, you do have to counter in the fact that we're running at six chunks, so it's not going to look the prettiest. But if you do temp your expectations a tad, then honestly, playing Minecraft on the X30 is possible, especially on Linux. And flying around, um, the FPS, yeah, it doesn't really drop that much. I guess we are getting, okay, we are dipping down to the 50s, but we are staying around that 60 FPS mark, which is quite incredible, honestly. So yeah, that's Minecraft 1.21 on the ThinkPad running on Pop! OS. Let me know what you think. So there you have it. A 15 pounds disheveled ThinkPad, once broken, now fully functional. Thankfully, there was nothing major to repair or else this video would have been a whole lot different. Overall, I'm quite pleased with this machine. Contrary to popular belief, these old ThinkPads are still usable for day-to-day -day tasks and as you can see, it was no slouch. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like, subscribe and share the video for future content. What do you think about the X230? Leave your thoughts down below. That's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.